Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365. In today's episode, we're doing something pretty exciting, which is eliminating email correspondence for support cases within our organization with our clients. We're doing so using Power Apps as our front end and Power Automate as our back end. Now, if you saw my previous video, I detailed out creating the support ticket app on Power Apps itself. Today's video will be demoing out the backside, which is Power Automate and all the connectors that are part of that. If you're an MSP and use a PSA tool today, this is going to be very similar, and I'll detail that out as we go through the demo. As always, if you guys find this content useful and want to see more content around Microsoft, the MSP space, and the Power Platform, be sure to subscribe. Let's dive in. Okay, so just a quick refresher on the app in general here. This is within Power Apps and Teams, and we've built the support ticket app. We have our tickets here on the left-hand side. This is Bruce Wayne's app. He does not want to correspond with customers anymore via email, so he built this app here so himself and other members of Wayne Enterprises can come in and respond to these support tickets. And all on the back end is what we're going to create, which is Power Automate, facilitating the communication here via the comment section. So as you can see here, this ticket got generated and this is what is generated when somebody emails our support email in the organization. And in here, I can go ahead and add a reply. Submit that. And as you'll see here, it goes ahead and posts this comment here. But what we're doing with Power Automate is when we actually post that, it's going to respond to the user or as in our customer via email on the back end as well too. So let's go ahead and dive into some of the prerequisites before actually starting in the canvas view where we create the Power Automate flow. One thing you want to do before you start your Power Automate flow is just kind of walking through the general steps of what you want to accomplish. And in this scenario, we're saying, hey, when somebody emails our support email address, I want to take in that email and I want to either look up to see if there's already a ticket that's been generated for this correspondence or I want to go ahead and create a new ticket with that as the first comment in there. So what we're doing here is facilitating the new email coming through. We're looking through to see if that's generated any tickets in our database. In this case, that's Dataverse. And from there, we're generating new comments to facilitate the correspondence that's going on. And on the flip side, the users within Wayne Enterprises here, my organization, when they respond in that app, in the Power App itself, I want that to go ahead and respond to the email that the customer sent to us versus generating a new email every single time. And I want that to contain in the body of it, the message that we typed out via the application itself. So when you walk through that, it's just giving you a simple diagram to start off with. So you're not going in blind thinking of what you need to do because Power Apps and Power Automate itself, it's pretty intuitive when you think about searching for the connectors you're looking for, but there are gonna be some intricacies that we'll walk through today that are a little bit more complicated and we'll do those together as well too. So let's hop in now. The other prerequisites you need to make sure you have is just searchability for your Dataverse tables that we created in our previous episode. So let's dive into that. Okay, so back in my Teams environment here, I'm gonna go over back to my build section. And within my build section, I'm gonna click into the Teams environment that I have the support app in, the Power App that I created in the previous video. And one of the things it's going to do is list all the resources that are part of this ecosystem, if you will. So it's a partition ecosystem, like I mentioned last time, and you have all of your tables that you've created along with your applications and your cloud flows that you build with Power Automate. Now, in this case, I want to modify a little bit of the data here to facilitate what we're going to do within this demo. So in this particular section here, you want to click on properties of the table itself, and you want to make sure you go under the advanced options and click on rows in this table appear in search results. If you don't do this, it's possible that while we're searching through and trying to find tickets based off of an email coming through, you won't find any of those uh, searches available or you won't get any results returned in this particular case. The other thing to note here is just the general table logical name. So each table has this uh, concatenated type of designation here where you have a prefix that's you know unique per environment that you have and then whatever the table name is here. So I'd go ahead and copy that and just paste it in a notepad there because you're gonna need it later in this video. 
The next thing we want to do here is add a couple more columns into our environment just to facilitate being able to carry over message ID from an email so we can respond to it along with a created by so we can see who this email is coming from and might differ from our primary contact related to the customer. So we're clicking here, we're gonna click on new column. And in this particular case, we're gonna go ahead and just say that this is our message ID. And this is going to be a single line of text and you'll expand this here and put the max character length up a little bit more just to give yourself some more room. These aren't necessarily more than 100 characters, but they can get pretty lengthy here. So I just like to be careful. And from there, all we're gonna do is click on save. And then from there, we're doing the same exact thing here. This one is just going to be a created by display name. And in it, we're gonna have our text, but this is going to be an email format. And we don't have to create anything additional here in the advanced settings. We can go ahead and just click on save for this one. Okay, so we have our couple of other columns there that we needed. We can now go up to the Cloudflow section here. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new Cloudflow that's going to be automated. And you can add a name and you can start with triggers here. I just like to skip this step just because I find it's a little bit tedious to do that in that UI. I'm gonna go ahead and title this. I'm gonna call it our support ticket. Flow. And in here, what you can do is search for your 365 Outlook connector. Just type in 365 and you'll see it here up at the top. So they have all these triggers here and the key thing to note as far as the first designation goes is that if you're looking to do this via a shared mailbox, there's a specific one for shared mailbox. If you try to add a shared mailbox to when an email arrives in this section, you're going to get this as a, as a failure message or it just won't ever send through and trigger the actual output for uh, the flow itself or the automation. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on shared mailbox because we're using our support shared mailbox within Wayne Enterprises. Up at the top here, you can go ahead and paste that in and you should be able to find it there via the search. And then in the advanced options, you can see more fields here. If you wanted to put other members that get the email address, you can here as well too. You can add support again if I really wanted to. And then we're gonna click on new step. And this next step, what I wanna do is I want to basically parse the HTML. This body of this email will come in as HTML. And I want to parse the body into plain text because I want the plain text to come through in my ticket. I don't want a bunch of HTML tags coming through. So if you search for HTML to text, you're going to get a um, value here called content conversion. And under there, the only action is this one right now, which is in preview, but it works quite well. And you'll be able to see that once we go through the flow. But from the content here, you're gonna select your dynamic content. So the dynamic content is now coming from this option here. And we're going to say we want the body of that to be converted from the HTML um, into the plain text as well tier two. The other things that we need to do here are set a couple of variables or initialize, I should say a couple of variables that we're gonna use later on within the flow. So within here, you can start to type in variable. And the things we wanna do here is to say we're gonna uh, go ahead and initialize a variable. So down below, here you can enter a variable name. The first one we need to create is a ticket ID. We need a ticket ID because we need to be able to reference whenever we add new comments to a ticket, we need to be able to reference a ticket ID within the flow itself. And this will make more sense again once we get through the, the later uh, values here. But you can rename this here as far as the actual name of the step. We're just gonna say init ticket ID. And then we're gonna do the same thing here with another variable. And this one, we're gonna rename this and we're gonna say init message ID. And the variable name is going to be message ID. And this is also going to be a string value. So this is just initializing these variables. We're gonna set them later in the flow once we get to those stages here, but this is giving us some flexibility to reference that within various conditions. And when I say conditions, I mean if-then statements. 
So the next thing you have to consider here is when we have this email coming through, it could either be a brand new uh, support case, meaning that they're just submitting an email has a, has a generic subject, and that will be what we're going to name our support cases here as well too. But it could also just be a reply. And if you're familiar with email, it's going to come in as RE colon and then space and then the subject name. So it's changing up the format a little bit. So what we need to do here is we need to determine whether or not this is a reply and we need to take that and decide whether or not we have an existing ticket. The whole purpose of this next flow is really to start determining if the ticket exists or if it doesn't exist and we need to create it. So we're going to click on control here. We're going to click on control, which is basically then uh, a value setting if this value is equal to or contains or something of that nature. And then you have your fork of things you need to do. So in this particular case, what we're going to say is that we want to get the subject from the dynamic content of the email that comes in. We want to know if it contains RE colon. So this is basically saying either this is a reply to our email here, or this is going to be something where uh, we, we have a brand new email coming through. So if no, meaning that it's not a reply, then we need to go ahead and look up to see if this ticket already exists in our database. This is a little redundant if it's a reply, but I want to do it anyway, just because we need to make sure that you're not duplicating tickets whenever you have this flow. So Microsoft Dataverse here is our backend, obviously, that we created all of our tables in. But this, again, is where if you're a PSA user, you could leverage your PSA tool connector within here to check with via the API whether or not an existing ticket is uh, living within your support ticket database. So from here, we're going to go ahead and list rows as our action or use list rows as our action. And it'll sign into Dataverse as well here, too. And so for our table name, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking for the ticket table, tickets table in this case. And when I click on show advanced options, we have some other rows here. And so what we want to do is we want to look for the subject value. And we want to say that the name of our ticket is the subject value. So in here, you can see there's a filter rows. And with that, we're going to go ahead and leverage an OData query to basically figure out if we have this or not. So in this case, if there's no subject or if the subject doesn't contain reply, we're going to use that designation we copied earlier, which is specifically the logical name of our table plus the column name in this case. I found that if you do just the, the regular names of the columns, the, the ones that are listed in, in plain text, they don't always return great results for you. So we're going to do equals here, and you're going to do single quotes. And between those, we're going to select the subject here as well, too. So we're saying, hey, look through my ticket table and try to filter for a row where it's equal to the subject here. So we're basically just looking at that, that as far as our query itself. And obviously, this has some flaws where you would want to add some more criteria to this to narrow this down, like having the status as open or new looking for the customer name based off of the domain coming through via the email itself. I'm keeping this more simplistic just for the sake of time in this video. So with that, you have you know your output here and um, essentially it's going to return you a value whether it's it's going to be um, something that's returned in saying that there's there's rows that we found or there's going to be no rows that rows that they found. So again, just like last time, this is kind of a fork decision, right? It's either going to come back empty or it's going to come back with some values. So we need to add that same condition control as we did before. And in this case, we're going to use what's known as an expression. And there's a lot of built in expressions here. But we're basically going to say empty, which is a, a native expression. And then you def decide what what is the collection you want me to validate. And this is going to return um, if it is true or false, so Boolean value. So in this particular case, we want to look at the value, and that's going to be the dynamic content of our list rows. So this list rows, if it finds something in the value, it's either going to be something that's empty again, or it's going to be something that has uh, a value in it. And so we're going to leave that as is, and then we're going to say if this is equal to false. So if it's equal to false, it means that it's not empty. 
you know, it's kind of a double negative here, but you're saying if this is empty, then I want it, or if it's empty is equal to false, then it actually does have a value and we'll walk through the ticket because the ticket already exists. And if it is equal to false, meaning that it is empty, then we'll walk through creating a whole new ticket and facilitating this flow. So let's just walk through the first use case, which is saying that a ticket exists. So now what I need to do is I need to grab the output of whatever this was so I can extract certain data like the ticket ID. So in this particular case, there's a operation called parse JSON. And the JSON is what we're getting from this particular value here as well too. So before we do this, actually, we, we need to know what the schema type is, meaning we need to know the schema format. And so to do that, we have to basically kind of do a test run before we can actually add that connector which I can do with a connector called compose or an operation called compose. So in here, we're going to put the output of our list rows. And you see there's a lot of variables for our dynamic content, but we're going to basically just put in the body value. I think I'm skipped over it here. It's right up at the top. So with this, we're gonna go ahead and run a test just so we can get the schema to come out here. And you'll see that a little bit better once we do this. I'll click on save. So once that's saved, I can go ahead and click on test. I'll need to use manually for the first test here and I'll click on test. And it says, hey, to see how it works, send a e new email to your inbox. So basically I have to send an email to the shared mailbox here. So I'm here within a, a third party, so a, an outside tenant with a different domain and I'm gonna be sending it to my support distro, my shared mailbox here, and I'm gonna use a subject line that actually is already in my Dataverse database as a ticket name. Just to trigger this, you'll want to do that. Make sure you have a ticket name that matches this just to get the correct output that you're looking for, and you're gonna say, this is a test. So I'll go ahead and send that. And this will take about a minute or two for it to finish loading, but you'll get a success message at the end and it will run through and within these the reason why I did this again is to go through and, and view the output of what we're getting here so in this particular case I can see that the condition was true meaning that we had a match or we had at least a value that was found through searching for the ticket name with the subject line of joker on the loose so within here you have your compose that you made and this actually gives you the full uh, schema that you can use as a sample for parsing and grabbing values. And again, in this here, we want to grab the ticket ID so that we can create new comments on that ticket ID and not have to guess at what that is. So let's go ahead and click on edit. We'll go back into our condition here. And within here, we're going to add that action back, which is the parse JSON. And in here, I'm gonna go ahead and select that JSON and I'm gonna select the body content, again, of list rows, which is up here. And in the schema section, I'm gonna generate from a sample and I'm gonna click on done. So this is going to go ahead and, and generate some dynamic values for me. And what I can do then is I'm gonna set my variable that we created earlier for our ticket ID. And it'll be from the drop down here. And we're gonna say that the variable value here is our ticket ID. So if you scroll down within this, you'll find one here with your prefix. It's part of your environment and then the tickets ID. It'll automatically apply the supply to each, which is a loop because it's an array. And that's fine, you don't have to worry about anything there. It's actually gonna pull that out just okay. And now the next action that we have to do here is go ahead and set our other variable, which is our message ID. And so we're gonna go ahead and select set variable. And under here, we're gonna say message ID. And then from there, again, under our dynamic content, you could just search for it because it gets pretty lengthy at this point, message ID, and then you'll find that under the email rise from shared mailbox. And so this is basically giving you the ability to, to dynamically set this value as well here too. And from there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to update a couple of things here, what we need to do, which is First and foremost, we need to update our ticket with the new message ID, meaning that whenever we have replies coming through, we need to know what to reply to, or when we have uh, comments coming through, we need to know what to reply to on the front end. And again, this will make more sense as we get into the other half of this, which is the user side and them interacting within the Power App. But basically within the Dataverse 
operations here, I want to go ahead and say I want to update a row. And for this table, I want to go ahead and update the ticket. Tickets, and it will actually have that error message come up each time. And for the row ID, I want this to be something that I'm getting from uh, the above parsed output earlier, which is my variable, which is my ticket ID here. And so what I'm doing here in this particular case is I'm updating the message ID with my message ID variable. And again, you don't necessarily need a variable. I just like to do it for these contexts where this could be dynamic multiple places within our flow itself. So the next thing we need to do here is add a new action. And in this case, we're going to select Microsoft Dataverse again, and we're going to add a new row. This is us adding a new comment to the comments table. And if you see a duplicate like this, it's most likely because you've had one in a global scope, potentially, that's my issue here, versus an isolated scope within your team's environments. You can quickly figure out which one it is by letting it load and then seeing the variables or columns, I should say, that are part of it. So in this particular case, I'm gonna add the description which is coming from my HTML conversion and HTML to text, remember? So we, we rip that body apart from the subject or from the email we get, and we get out the plain text from it. The created by, we're gonna use from the from address, from the email that's coming through. And then for the ticket here, we need a particular designation. So you would think from this, and this is just by testing that I figured this, this out, but essentially here, you're going to look at getting the um, name of your ticket table again, which is the one that we had previously. And that again is your prefix underscore and then the table name itself here. One thing that I've noticed is I like this actually in plural as well. So you have to add this ES to the opposite side and then you're going to append uh, the ticket ID here. So this is kind of how they're, they're filtering and searching for the ticket to associate this comment to. And underneath that, you don't really have to do anything else here. We just want to add those fields dynamically. So we can go ahead and test this out by just saving the flow. And then we can click on test. And this time, since we already ran one, we can use a trigger that we've already used. So we don't have to keep sending a fake email uh, to our email address, which is nice. So this will load and you'll see there might be some that take a little bit longer just due to the nature of looping or anything of, of that type of operation and we see that our flow ran successfully. So within here, I can see that my condition two was met, it was already found, and it parsed the JSON and it updated and added a new row. So the description is, this is a test, which is the body of the email that I had sent previously. And if we pop into our application, we can see here that we have the ticket that we had and we can see our comment. That was the parse body along with the from, which is the sender here, which is that third party that I sent it from in that other browser. So that's everything that we wanted to see from that particular test. Now, back in my flow here, I'll go back down. We need to add, obviously, the condition here under the no. So basically saying that we didn't find any values, that this con didn't contain anything here, but it was an existing ticket as well too. So we're gonna generate a whole new ticket, which is gonna be a new support case. So in this use case, we're going to search under the Microsoft Dataverse and we're going to add a new row. And we're going to look for our ticket table. And again, that error is kind of glitchy, but it'll come up. So for the name, again, I'm just using the subject here. And you can fill in other metadata that you'd want that may be part of your reasons, but one of the ones I want to fill out is the status because it's going to come in as new. I want to fill out created by, which is going to be my from. And the only other thing I want to add here is the message ID. So I'll go ahead and add my variable there as well too. And now if you think about it, we are needing to do the same thing that we did with our previous step, which is that we need to parse out the output here so that we can grab certain things like the ticket ID once this is actually generated. So the next thing we'll do here is add our compose using the same trick we did last time. 
We'll go ahead and save this as well too, so that we can go ahead and try to kick off a new email. And again, for this test, we're going to do this manually just to see a new flow come through where we're actually generating a new ticket versus having one we've, we've already used where it's automatically going to just look for that new ticket. So let's click on test. And then back in our third party here, we'll go ahead and mock up an email and we'll go ahead and send that off to go ahead and trigger our flow. And then back in the portal here, we can see that ran successfully. So went ahead and went through the condition here and we've got our output. So we'll go ahead and copy this, click on edit, and we'll add our new action, which again is our uh, parse JSON. And we'll go ahead and we'll say we want the output or body of this guy up here. And we'll generate this from a sample. We'll say done. And then from there, what we're gonna do is go ahead and set our variable again for our ticket ID. And we're gonna grab it from our parse JSON. And again, this one will be our ticket ID. So we've set that. And now the last thing we need to do is go ahead and add a comment to our row. So we'll click on Microsoft Dataverse. We'll say add a new row. We're going to use our comment table. And for the description, again, we're going to use our plain text that we used previously. And under the created by, we're going to use our from. And then under the tickets, we can add the same thing we did over here. with our ticket ID as well appended. So all that's looking good here. We can go ahead and click on save. So now we have our conditions met basically saying, hey, if this doesn't contain a reply, then we can go ahead and either update a row if we can find the ticket, but if we can't find the ticket, we're gonna create a new one and then add a comment to append to it here as well. So if the subject contains reply, the entire workflow is almost identical here besides the very first step. So when we click on this one, we want to go to list rows. And from here, we're going to select our ticket table. But if you think about this, if this actually does contain reply, we want to go ahead and find a ticket that basically matches it with this cut out of it. So you want to trim this out. Uh, of that to basically facilitate your search, which then facilitates the same exact component we have over here, which is saying that if the search is empty, um, then we're going to go ahead and create a new ticket. And if it's not empty, then we're gonna go ahead and just append a new row. So within here, as you recalled over here, we used a syntax for the created name or the column name, I should say. And we're gonna do the same thing here but with the equals in, inside our brackets, we use a couple of expressions. The first one of which we're gonna use is trim, which removes any leading or trailing white space from a string. And within there, we're also gonna use one called split, which is gonna allow you to split a string and take certain parts of it. In this particular case, we need that to take in the subject here from our email as well too. And from there, what we're gonna split on, in this particular case, if you put this in single parentheses, is that colon. So where we have our reply, we want to split the value there. And then what we want to do is we want to take the second value, which in this case, these indexes run based off of a starting value of zero. So we're saying, give me the second value. So if we're splitting RE colon and the subject title, we're basically getting rid of all the white space with trim and just taking the second value, which is the actual subject, which should be our ticket name. And that may be hard to visualize just looking at this, but it is something you'll understand more once you get the, the flow and, and see that from the output table. So again, like I mentioned, the rest of it is the exact same as far as what we're doing on both sides. So in this particular case, you know, you can see that 
we're just going to basically mimic all of this over here. So one cool thing you can do to basically copy that is just click on these three little dots over here, click on copy to my clipboard, add an action, and then you can click on my clipboard and you have this condition two over here. And now it's basically setting this up here. So you have everything that you had on the opposite side because we're not changing anything regardless here of, of either of these components. And I can actually delete these composes as well too, just simply because I don't need them anymore. I was only using them because of the fact that I needed to get the uh, schema format for my JSON or parse JSON there. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these guys and I'll go ahead and save. And so one thing I got that you'll notice that I forgot to mention for you guys here is that you have to have a uh, unique name. So we copied everything we had over here but these variables and these components are gonna be listed a little bit differently. So in this particular case, I have to go ahead and fix this because remember, this is referencing this guy over here and it doesn't know where it's at. It needs to reference this list rows here. So, and in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just go to empty and then I'm going to click on dynamic and I'm gonna click on the body of, or the value of the list rows too. So that'll clear up that. And then here I'm going to use the body of list row two tables. And in here I'm going to be using the parse JSON four. So you basically just have to go through and update all of your variables in this particular case to make sure they're part of the correct um, segments here or operations that you're running. So I'm gonna pause briefly while I get that done and then be right back. Okay, so I saved it and that error went away here. So you can go through and I would recommend just running some tests here. Um, again, just facilitating this. I know this works already though. Um, in this particular case, since I've demoed it out a couple different times. So now what we need to do is go into our application itself and finish out the rest, which is simply what the user within an organization needs to do, which is submit replies in the comment section. So what you want to do here is go back to your build button and make sure you're in your correct Teams channel or Teams environment here. You click on see all. And what you want to do here is click on new, Cloudflow, automated, just like what we did before. We're going to go ahead and skip this step. And here I'm going to select our Power Automate connector and I'm going to use Power Apps V2. I'm going to add a couple of text inputs here. The first one is going to be our message ID. So this is our Outlook message ID. Second of which is going to be our body. So this is going to be what I, within Wayne Enterprises, submit as part of my reply in the comment section. So we'll click on new step, we'll search for 365 to pull up our Outlook connector. And under the actions here, you can scroll down quite a bit to see the email to, or reply to email V3. And within here, you're just simply putting in our dynamic variables. So our message ID and our body. And that is it, you can click on save. You could also give it a new name if you really wanted to, to designate it, but it doesn't matter if you don't want to. It is best practice probably to go ahead and use your own names that are a little bit more descriptive, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip over that for now. So then back in the build section, we'll go into our support ticket app. And then from here in the app, we're gonna click on the Power Automate flow on the left-hand side. And then you have a couple of these uh, instant flows that we've created here, the one we've created here most recently, is going to be this reply to email. So we're going to inject that into the application so we can call it in our function here. So the next thing we need to do is go down to our button here because we want to basically go ahead and use the on select function to facilitate this workflow. Now the key thing here also is that you want to do this before you submit this form. And you're doing that because once you submit this form, on success variable has a reset form. So you want to grab the information that you need before you actually reset the form and there's nothing to actually grab. So within here, you're going to call your power automate flow. And within there, there's going to be a single method, which is run. And in here, we're going to say that it wants text and text, which is our message ID. And it's helping you with the syntax here immediately. So in this particular case, I'm gonna say I wanna look at the selected ticket 
and I want to get the message ID from it here because when we're replying, remember we've been updating that message ID on the ticket so we can reply to the correct email that it's coming from. And then for the body, what we're gonna do is we're going to basically select this particular value. So in this case, I can look at my tree value and I can see it's called data card value nine. So again, should do a better job about naming conventions here, but essentially you can call it data card value nine dot value. And so this will just take in whatever is submitted as far as the new comment goes, and then it will apply to this particular user. So in this particular use case, I can go ahead and start the app. And then from here, I'll go ahead and say, I am responding to your test. Submit that. And so immediately the comment comes up here and then we can see our flow generate and actually pop into our customer email and we can see the response come through as well. So I didn't see the response come through so I checked and the flow had actually failed. And in the error details we can see this message about a shared mailbox here as well too with some more documentation. So if you get this, the way to fix it is if you go under edit here and then you can click back into your email reply, click on show advanced options. And then from there, put in the support address back in the original mailbox address here and click save. So from here, I'll go ahead and test this out. And I will use my failed tests before. And now this ran successfully. So I did not get that message anymore. And I got my response is going from my support email which is that shared mailbox back in the customer email here you can see that this is the email that came through and it is a response from my original email to support saying this is a test and saying hey I'm responding to your test so it's fully incorporating all the things that we try to pull in here which is facilitating a new ticket adding comments and then allowing the internal member of the organization to facilitate correspondence with the front end being an application and the back end being email. So that's everything I wanted to showcase for you guys today. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you start to develop new Power Automate workflows to facilitate a front end to email. As I mentioned earlier, if you guys like the content, feel free to like and subscribe. Otherwise, leave any comments or questions below. Thanks guys. Have a great day.